Hello, it's This One Verse, and today I'm going to be kind of changing things up. It's going to be more of like a laid back reflection type video about my time at Fiacon. So back in October, I was asked to speak at this online literary convention called Fiacon. It's a convention created to uplift and celebrate and help networking among authors of color writing speculative fiction. And it was started by the editorial team behind Fi Literary Magazine, which is a literary magazine I've been subscribed to for a couple of years. I haven't done a great job highlighting it on my channel. I'm going to try and do better in the future. But Fia Literary Magazine is a literary magazine for speculative fiction by Black authors. And I was invited to speak at it, and I was very excited because I had been subscribed to the magazine for a few years. I knew a lot of the names of, like, the people who were being invited to speak, and so I was just like, yeah, I would love to. And all in all, it was, like, a very, very fun event. I'd never been to a virtual convention before. It was on Discord. It was actually kind of perfect for me because... I did have some technical issues accessing some of the panels, but like I'm someone who gets like very overwhelmed and like spaces with a lot of people. I don't know if I really would have been able to do a weekend of that realistically, but since everything was digital, it was a little easier for me to like step back and just like, you know, get snacks. I felt like I got a lot out of it. I wasn't sure if it was something more for like authors trying to network and do stuff, but like even just as a reader, I felt like there's a lot of things for me to like listen to and learn from. It's so weird because even though I was just like in the discord it did feel like oh my god like I'm so close to these authors like it's so weird to be like oh my god like I'm in a discord with P. Jelly Clark. Rebecca Roanhorse was there. L.L. McKinney was there. Looking forward to um going next year. I would definitely get a ticket because they sold out really fast this year. So the panel I was on was called The Role of the Critic. It was moderated by Leslie Light and my co-panelists were Alex Brown, who writes at Tor, uh, Sean Dowie, who I think has a personal blog, and then in Jerry of Onyx Pages. And, you know, the title's pretty self-explanatory. I don't regret, like, going on the panel, but I did kind of feel like the odd one out in terms of, like, I was definitely the, like, least experienced person there, and I'm pretty sure I had the smallest platform. I'm not going to, like, rehash the whole panel. I'm just going to kind of talk about what I said and how I feel about what I said editing Chloe here. Basically at the time I was still working through being asked to be on a panel. Like if someone asks you to be on a panel they think you have some expertise, they think you have some experience, they think you have something of value to add to a conversation. And I'm still working on balancing like being humble and being honest about like where I'm at and also being confident and like plain about the things that I do know. And I think that on the panel, I might have sold myself short in some ways, but it is what it is. I think it's going to be a while before I try to be on another panel that is like, so high profile relative to like the stuff that I usually do. Like, I think my main point that I made in the panel is that like I don't really see myself in conversation with writers that much like because I do have a smaller platform. By and large, if I like interact with a writer, it's kind of like I sent them fan mail via Twitter, right? Like I tagged them in like a post saying like, oh, I really liked your book. Like, oh, I took this cool picture. I made this graphic with your book. I hope you like it. My reviews I see mostly as being in conversation with other readers, which I think is like a lot more standard for amateur reviewers. Like I think that distance is like something that's been emphasized a lot more in the social media age. And also that like I don't necessarily see myself as doing like analysis of this stuff just because like when I think of like literary analysis that often involves like talking about plot points a lot and going like really in depth into the book and like I'm kind of doing like you know general overviews of the book. I will name some themes or like topics of discussion that come up but I don't really say you know what I think the main takeaway is a lot of the time because sometimes doing that would just kind of give away the entire ending of the book. My reviews are also, do I think the marketing is accurate? Do I think that based on the advertising, like that's going to get the right reader? And like, are there things you should brace yourself for? 
I don't do a great job at giving content warnings, but or something that like really jumps out to me, then I will mention it. And for me, I think it was weird being on the panel because like how I view myself is like I'm not like the expert. I'm a person who's like well read in what I have chosen to be well read on. And I'm someone who I think is good at like thinking through what an author is saying and like the context that a novel is being written in. But like I'm not someone who's like I have the definitive read on this work. And for me, I think it's very important not to be like I'm the expert because, you know, there are definitely things where I'm like, this is my opinion, but like I'm not like the end all be all by any means like this is like my experience like my limitations and like here's someone who maybe has like insights and stuff that are very important to check out because I'm missing them and then also we talked about do you have uh, different standards for rating books by marginalized authors and like I felt kind of bad because I was talking about how I try not to rant about books and like literally like the day after FriCon I had a wrap up where there's like a book where I really didn't have anything good to say about it. Like in general, I do try not to be ranty, but that's not really like because of the author type thing. Basically, when I think of my negative reviews, I'm mainly thinking of like my audience. Like I feel like I kind of just like put the author aside. Editing Chloe here. What I mean by I'm thinking of the reader is that like I know that books are not cheap. I know that time is valuable. Am I like letting people know what they're getting into so they can best decide how to spend their time and their money like on the one hand there are some books where I'm like I think I'm being too hard on this and so I don't want to like dissuade people from picking it up just because of like my personal preferences but also like I personally am someone who will get annoyed if I have been reading reviews and they don't mention something pretty egregious that happens in terms of like racist characterizations or like poorly handled like plot lines or things like that I do feel a little betrayed when I read those reviews and I go into the book and I'm like this definitely needs to be mentioned by someone and I read however many reviews and no one mentioned it so I'm like yes I want to be like mindful of the fact that I'm like very nitpicky about certain things and like my hang-ups aren't everyone else's hang-ups but also like at a certain point I value more so the reader's time And, like, there are instances where I'll feel bad. Like, in retrospect, like, I didn't mention a thing in a review and I see another reviewer mention it. Or I see, like, a lot of reviews praising something where, like, I had kind of an issue with it that I was like, uh, maybe this is just me, so I'll just won't mention it. I'm sure someone else will go more in depth into it. And then, like, it seems like no one's going more in depth into it. Okay, so I had to shift positions. That's why the frame's kind of different. But, like, at the end of the day, it's, like, the readers I'm going to talk to, right? Like, the people on my channel... I'm going to see them multiple times. Like, I have regular followers who will, like, comment and, like, talk to me about stuff that they're reading. And, like, I might talk to them about a recommendation I gave them. Like, I get that there are experience barriers with, like, newer authors or, like, indie authors in terms of, like, how many people they can get to edit their stuff. But, like, for me, I really try to keep the reader experience foremost in my mind. I think that it just caused me less stress. I don't do standalone reviews for books where I don't have any positives to talk about I don't have an issue putting those in a wrap-up but like for a standalone no I feel like I would struggle just to get the energy to get in front of the camera to do that it's just like very much not what excites me about having a booktube channel so like I leave that to others to do it and the thing that kind of came up over the course of the panel was that there weren't any bookstagrammers on the panel on that like we kind of fumbled it and talking about like what is good about bookstagram and I guess that was like my first intro to thinking about who else is on a panel with you like if and Jerry hadn't been on the panel like I really wouldn't have had an issue with stepping down or suggesting her or something like that just because I'm like if there's only gonna be one booktuber like and Jerry is like more than qualified to do it but I guess I'm still getting used to who are the other amateur viewers out there and like navigating the different platforms that people are reviewing on and like being thoughtful in that way so yeah that was just a moment to think and reflect and do better in the future that was that and then I just had the rest of the weekend to attend other panels and so I'm going to talk a little bit about those so one of the ones I went to was the confederation of aunties this was hosted by Si Ong, Jen Lyons, Diana M. Fo, Nibidita Sen, and Veronica Henry. The panelists all discussed 
what do extended families look like and like why don't we see more aunties in stories a very interesting thing that someone brought up is also like aunties as like enforcers and you know not always in like a good way like aunties as enforcers of like misogyny and queer antagonism and stuff like that it was just like a thing to think about for me because like I have like a decent amount of contact with my like extended family but um, it's really only like one aunt that I keep up with because we have like similar hobbies everyone else it's kind of like I see you when I see you Honestly, it's bad. I'm kind of slacking in terms of how I keep up with my cousins, but it's really like my cousins in the extended family that are the people I talk to a lot. I'm like the oldest cousin. And so in some ways I was like a pseudo like auntie to like my cousins. Like I was, you know, giving them piggyback rides and when they were really young and stuff, I babysat some of them. So another panel I attended was the Art of Self-Promotion. This was hosted by Martin K. Hill. Russell A. Smith, Suzanne Walker, Natasha D. Lane, and Shiv Ramdas. I got in on this one kind of late. Like, I'm not writing anything that I really need to self-promote for, but it does kind of seem like anything I would get out of it would be applicable to, like, a lot of different areas of my life. I think my favorite speaker from this one was Shiv Ramdas. Um, he had, like, a analogy that, like, really stood out in my head. The analogy was that, like, everyone wants to be a really good cook, but people don't really talk about, like, the food prep and stuff that goes into being a good cook. And the analogy was that, like, writing is, like, the cooking and the food prep is, like, the self-promotion. And so his analogy was, like, no one wants to be good at chopping onions, but, like, to make a good soup, you have to get really good at chopping onions. Which I've kind of butchered. Um, I think he put it up on Twitter. If you look around, you can probably find it. Then the next panel I attended was SFF Fandom, Community and Finding Acceptance. This was hosted by Foz Meadows, Kedra Cheney. Isabel Schechter, L.L. McKinney, and N.E. Davenport. A lot of it was talking about why people might feel shunted out of uh, fandoms and also why do people seek out fandoms and like all the ways that people are navigating that. And this is just one that's close to my heart because like I <laughs> really relate to L.L. McKinney being like I don't really do online fandoms. I do have a few franchises that like I'm really passionate about and like I really like would buy merch for and have watched like all the episodes and like write fic about some of them. But like it's not a thing where I'm necessarily gonna go online and just like talk to randos about it. I had really just avoided fandom for a while just cause like I, I'd heard horror stories. There was like one point where I, I kind of reconsidered it. Like I got really into the Steven Universe and I was like, this is such a fluffy, nothing little cartoon. And like, how bad can the fandom be? For people who aren't in the fandom, there was an incident where art leaked, concept art, of a character called Concrete. Her personality traits were that she couldn't read, looked like a menstrual cartoon, and named Concrete, which is like a slap in the face because all the gem characters have pretty names and then it's like oh the black one is concrete mm. like when that happened and I found out about it I was upset and I was kind of over it because I was like whatever concrete didn't make it to the screen but then the fan response I like almost consider just like stopping watching the show altogether because it's just so disgusting. Like there are people being like, oh my God, this is like a smear campaign. They're attacking Rebecca Sugar because this is a queer show. And there were people just being like, how is this racist? Like, I think this minstrel cartoon looking character is beautiful. Like I had joined some Facebook group for Steven Universe. I was supposed to be all fluffy and good and whatnot. And like, that was like literally like one of the first posts I saw in there was people talking about how great concrete was and like being like really obtuse about fans being upset with how Rebecca Sugar and the creators have handled some of the black coded character storylines and I was just like this just isn't for me (laughs) I don't need to be here so I just really related to some of the people talking about like why they don't interact with fandom I've kind of mentioned that I write fic now which is fine because like I don't need to interact with like wide swaths of people like I can just be very selective about what I read and you know who's commenting on my stuff and like the fic I'm writing is for such a niche ship within the fandom I don't get a whole lot of traffic like I'm very happy with the responses I've gotten and people how people have been interacting with it but like I know that relative to like other ships it's like just not getting a lot of attention 
it was funny. I like asked a friend who was into the series, like if there was a lot of fanfic on the ship and they're like, no, actually there isn't really any. And I was like, well, keep an eye out for us. Cause I'm putting us on the map. <laughs> so yeah, I enjoyed that panel. The next one I attended was untapped potential and world building slash inspiration for East Asian spec fic. This one was hosted by Andrew K. Ho, Andrea Stewart, RF Kuang, and Essel Huang. And I was excited for this one because I think I'd heard about this right after Essel Huang announced that she's writing a retelling of The Water Margin. Um, the Water Margin is this like hundreds of years old classic Chinese folk novel, which I have not read yet. I would like to read it at some point and then read this retelling, but I was very excited for it because of that. And it was an interesting panel. Someone dropped like a Monkey King short story that they enjoyed in there and it was a very good short story to read. This isn't one that I'm super knowledgeable about because I haven't read a whole lot of East Asian spec fic. So it was just kind of like me listening. The next panel I sat in on was Av, Pigeon in the Global Patois, hosted by Shanghai and Jerry, Shiv Ramdas, Eden Royce, and Christopher Caldwell. Eden Royce was talking about writing Dal Gicha dialogue in her now released um, middle grade historical fantasy, Root Magic. And it's just a very interesting panel because language is so important to conveying culture. And often it seems like publishers are very skittish about putting out books that use dialect. People are talking about, you know, why is that? How do you like navigate that? Yeah, and this was said in a separate panel, but I think it was Sui Davis Okungboa who said that the only difference between a language and a dialect is that a language has a navy. And so thinking about the politics of language and the power that is given to something that is a language versus a dialect. Another panel I went to was reading is networking, building community by engaging work. I had to because, you know, Chronicles of Noria, Perpetual Pages, Noria and Audrey were there. Marcus Shiro, Kwame Mbalia, and Charles Pacer were also on this panel. And it was just interesting listening to people talk about using reading to get to know people. I've kind of experienced that just through being on BookTube. Also, like, the unique opportunities that you can have to, like, talk to authors through author interviews. Just kind of bonding with people over work that you both love. And one of the panelists was talking about a time at a signing, a book signing for N.K. Jemison, And N.K. Jemison had written an erotica short story. N.K. Jemison is one of, like, the few authors whose sex scenes like I absolutely adore. And so he mentioned that she'd written the erotica, but he didn't say the name. And I was like, way to bury the lead. Like an NK Jemison erotica, I need this in my life. But thankfully someone in the discord found it and posted it. And so I'm gonna share that with you for those who are so inclined. The story was called Dancer's War and it appeared in the Like Twin Stars anthology from Circlet Press. So I haven't read it yet. I look forward to reading it at some point. I'm sure it's amazing. And then the last panel I attended was Speculative Fiction is Global. This was hosted by Gautam Bhatia, Yasser Bajat, Catalina Watt, Eugen Bacon, and Uche Ogbuji. It's just very interesting listening to people outside of the United States talk about like what are the unique hurdles to publishing that they face, what are the type of stories they want to tell. It was nice to see Eugen Bacon because I hadn't read anything by her at this point. I just kind of like heard her name. I knew some of the things that she'd written, but she had on like a beautiful dress. It was like the bold, like very colorful African print. I think it was like teal and blue. And I, I think it was like a chevron. I think it had like shoulder puffs on it. And I think she might've had a head wrap and it just looked gorgeous. And she told a funny story about raising her son in Australia with this like culture that, that is a lot more familiar than what she's used to. Yeah, so that happened. Watched the Ignite Awards, for which Jesse of Bowties and Books was the announcer. The awards looked really nice, like the little medallions. And so just like on the whole, it's like a very fun, like booing experience. Like I was like sad that I couldn't get to all the panels I wanted to. Like I slept in some days because they had it going like around the clock. Like they had panels going from like midnight to midnight of the next day, like for people in all different time zones. And there's just like all this activity in the Discord, and I kind of felt bad that I wasn't getting as much of it as I could, but at the same time, I was like, there's only so much I'm going to do. For a lot of the panels, they were recorded and saved in the archives for people who bought tickets, and there are definitely some I want to revisit and see for myself. So, yes, I had a great experience. I ran into some people that I didn't know were going to be there, like other, like, you know, reviewers or people I've met through quarantine pages and stuff. 
And I probably should have guessed that they would be there, but I definitely want to go next year and like, I guess be more like concerned up, be like, oh, who's going? So like we can talk and meet up and do all that fun stuff. So what are your favorite like book conventions to go to? I'm definitely on the lookout for more that are worth checking out. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. Goodbye.